emotions distort reality. A lot of the things that we think and believe about ourselves and the world around us are lies that our brain tells us. Hey everybody, so my name is Rylan and welcome back to my channel. Today is Saturday 19th at 7.31 p.m. You're probably like, why are you making a video on a Saturday night? Well, I don't have friends and two, this video is really important to me because the idea of cognitive distortions and how our emotions lie to us is really important to me. And I was actually lucky enough to find a sweatshirt that has this important message on it. Um, it says, emotions distort reality. Ooh. Um, so I actually got this from the website called selfcareisforeveryone.com. Um, I discovered them on Instagram because they kept popping up on my feed of showing these amazing mental health sweatshirts. And finally, I clicked and I got sucked in and I bought like five different sweatshirts. That's okay. They're all positive, so I'm gonna say that spending money was an okay thing because the sweatshirt is amazing. But it's amazing because it is rooted in what, really what psychology is based on. So the study of CBT, which is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, is a modality of therapy, much like DBT, which stands for Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. And there's also psychotherapy, psychoanalysis, all that good stuff. So CBT basically revolves around the fact that our thoughts, affect our emotions. So the notion of cognitive distortions is that our brain tricks us into thinking things that aren't true. Therefore, our emotions distort our reality. So there are about 10 common, I mean, there's like 15, but there's really like 10 really, really common uh, cognitive distortions that I wanted to go over. I'm adjusting my light and I look like a ghost. Oops, oops. There we go. Um, so yeah, I wanted to go through them and you know, we can see together that our world is completely skewed because of what our mind tells us. So a first cognitive distortion is called all or nothing thinking, also called polarized thinking. This means simply that we see things as either good or bad, black or white. And this happens to be really common with individuals that have borderline personality disorder, such as myself. Um, because sometimes we look at people as all good or all bad, which can be pretty extreme if there's no gray area for people or things or situations to sit in. Also, um, there's overgeneralization. So basically this means that we tend to overgeneralize things. Let's say you take a test and you get a C. Well, we might say to ourselves, I'm a complete idiot and I suck at school. Whereas that's a pretty big statement to make just on the fact that you got a C. It's an overgeneralization. There's also something called a mental filter. Um, basically, this the best way to describe this is, let's say you're in a romantic relationship with somebody and your partner, I don't know, says something negative about you. I don't know. Don't be with someone if they say really mean things. But um, yeah, let's say your partner says like, I really didn't like that shirt you were wearing on Sunday. Sometimes when we have a mental filter, we decide to look at things and like discount the positive and we might base all of our thoughts around that one comment. When in reality, you are ignoring all of the positive experiences that you've had in the relationship the entire time. So therefore, maybe you spend that whole week thinking, oh my God, why did I wear that shirt? This relationship is a complete mess. Well, it's not. It's not. Now, this really closely fits into something called disqualifying the positive. And that, it, it basically acknowledges that positive experiences happen, but we reject embracing them. So an example of that would be, let's see. Do, do, do. Maybe someone received a positive review at work and someone, you know, hears that they got a compliment, but they think, oh, well, I only got this compliment because they felt bad for me or um, my dog just died or something like that. It, it's disqualifying that something positive happened to you because you're saying, well, yes, something good happened, but it only happened because of this, therefore it's not really valid and I still suck as a human being. Whereas maybe that compliment was really earned and they weren't just saying it to you out of pity. 
Now, there's two that have to do with basically assuming how people think, and that would be jumping to conclusions, which is also called mind reading. And then there is also um, fortune telling. So mind reading is simply as it sounds. That is assuming that we know what other people are thinking. We assume that if someone, you know, maybe you are walking down the street and you see one of your own, your own classmates and, you know, they, they just kind of like snub you or they give you a look. Well, we might mind read and assume, well, this person hates me. They didn't even want to talk to me or pay attention to me. We're assuming that that is what was going on when in reality that person might have had a really hard, difficult day. Maybe something is going on with their family. Maybe something is going on with their dog. I don't know why I keep using that example, but I'm going to stick with it. So yeah, we, we tend to flip it on ourselves and think that we did something wrong when in reality, a lot of the things that people are experiencing and, and bad moods don't have to deal with us. But somehow we find a way to make it about ourselves and then make ourselves feel bad about said situation when in reality, it probably didn't have to do with you. And that falls right into fortune telling. And basically that has to do with, <coughs> excuse me, our tendency to make conclu conclusions and predictions based on little or no evidence of holding them as truth. So an example of fortune telling would be um, a single person thinking that they're never gonna find love and they're never gonna be in a relationship. Well, there's no way to know that. You can't tell the future. And so again, that just kind of puts you in a negative spiral about yourself. You don't know. You don't know that you're never gonna get into college unless you apply. You don't know X, Y, Z because we are not psychic. There's also something called magnification or also catastrophizing. That's a really big word, catastrophizing which if you break it down, it sounds like catastrophe. That's exactly what it is. That's where we look at a situation and we just completely, we blow it out of proportion. Now I'm gonna say that in quotes because I believe that every single emotion that we feel as human beings is valid. I don't care if someone tells you that you're being dramatic or, or needy or you need to calm down. No, what you feel is fine in every single moment. But the point of these cognitive distortions is to tell us that our mind lies to us. So it's fine to feel all of the feels, but we also need to realize that a lot of it is our mind just being a big, not nice thing. I was gonna call our brains a swear word, but they're really not because our brains are fantastic. So catastrophizing basically means, um, what is this? It says an athlete who is generally a good player but makes a mistake may magnify the importance of the mistake and believe that he is a terrible teammate, while an athlete who wins a coveted award in her sport may minimize the importance of the award and continue believing that she is a mediocre player. That's that. So, should statements. This is something we all fall into. And when I realize it during the day, when I do these things, I'm just like, good golly. So should statements are probably one of, I don't know, one of the most damaging things I think as us as humans that we engage in is that we believe that we should do something, that um, we ought to, we should, we must do. So as a society, at least in America, we are told, um, you know, as young 18 year olds that we should go to college, that we should know what major we want. Um, society as a whole tells us we should get married, we should X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Well, if we get trapped into those things that we should be doing, what happens if we don't accomplish those things? If I don't want to go to college when I'm 18 because I should, I might start to think of myself as an utter failure. And that's just not true. So don't should yourself, as some people say. Um, ma, 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 ma. So this is probably the most accurate to the sweatshirt. It's called emotional reasoning. And basically what this means is, I feel it, therefore it must be true. Um, so an example of this, let's see, do they have a good one? 
Okay, great example. So if we think something, it doesn't mean that it's true. So if I think that my partner is cheating on me, that doesn't make it true. Just because I might be jealous and insecure and all these things, it doesn't automatically make it true. So I hope you're kind of seeing through these examples that when we do these things, it automatically locks us into the spot of thinking, holy crap, all of these things are true. This is what's wrong with my life, blah, blah, blah. But if you're breaking it down, you can see that if you're using emotional reasoning, AKA, if I feel this way, it has to be true. That's how we run into trouble and we just feel like shit about ourselves. Um, and then, let's see. And then I would say the last one is kind of what I was talking about before, which is personalization. And that involves taking everything personally or assigning blame to yourself without any logical reason to believe that you are to blame. Again, it's like that example of, I don't know, if a friend didn't have a fun night out when you guys were having girls night out that for some reason it had to do with you. Um, it's not that you didn't show Vanessa a fun time. It might be that Vanessa was really stressed out from family things and she wasn't mad at you. She just had other things on her mind. But we might think like, oh God, maybe I was really annoying, maybe X, Y, Z, when again, it had nothing to do with you. So I hope this made an inch of sense to somebody. <laughs> because basically what I'm trying to say is our minds have been conditioned to think all of these things, that we should go to college. If I feel something, it must be true, that you can tell what's gonna happen in the future, that if you do one single thing wrong, that you are automatically a failure. All of these things are not true and they are not fair and they greatly impact our day-to-day -day life and just our overall functioning and mental health. So I hope, you know, you can maybe see from one of one, some, all of my examples that this is something that happens to us. And what is the cure? You're like, Rylan, you're pointing out every single thing that we do wrong. How do I fix it? That, my friend, is called a cognitive reframe. So something that I have to do with someone that struggles with body image issues is instead of saying you're a big, fat, ugly cow, is I like to reframe it and say, I am curvy and I want to be more healthy. Or maybe another person thinks that they're big and they think that they're fat or whatever. Well, maybe they're just big and strong. So there's a lot of ways that we can reframe our mind to get rid of all of those distortions. So there's a whole lot of research on this, a whole lot of science, because as I said, this is an entire modality of therapy. It is called, again, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, CBT. It does not have to do with another CBT that exists on the internet, so please be careful what you search for. I'm gonna leave you guys with that, and I hope you have an amazing day. All right, bye. <laughs>